Shakespeare. You know, there were no men, or excuse me, there, no, there were no women playing, you know, in the plays. So men had to dress like women. This is Boy George. This is Milton Berle. This is Tu Wong Fu, Thanks for Everything, Julie Newmar. Priscilla, Queen of the Desert, when Terence Stamp dresses like a woman. So you get socialized into these positions. So let's talk about language, words. Right, let's talk about sexism. What do you think sexism is? What does it mean to be sexist? Um, I guess you'd favor one gender over the other. Favor one gender over the other. Which gender do you think that would be? Males. Probably males. Probably males and denigrate females. Mm -hmm. right here. Well, it wouldn't really be favoring one gender over the other, but it would be like conforming to the ideas of the master's steps. It's like you said, using that to judge people. Conforming? Um, yeah, those are both right. Mr. Wright? Yeah, yeah. How would you describe it? What do you think about those? Well, prejudice towards someone because of their gen perceived gender. Perceived gender. Well, let's let's talk about the words we use. And when I talk to my students, we say that language reinforces sexism, and we do that in four distinct ways. And I think it's on that sheet. And, and I, I don't have to remember them anymore, but females do not exist independently of males in our language. Let's, let's look at that. What do you know about these two Smiths? One is married. Yes, yes, yes. What do you know about him? He's a man. Is he married? We don't know. We don't know. He has it hidden. Not available? Available. Mysterious. <laughs> The person in power can hide their... What happens... Here's, here's my wife's maiden name. Karen Willard. With a, with a W, Willard. So when Karen and I got married, she is no longer Karen Willard. But she is Mrs. Paul Ruth. Her whole name is gone. Now, it's a loss of identity. Now, since the modern feminist movement, there has been an alternative, and that's MS, Ms. Ms. Magazine. Well, one of the things I teach about in my classes, and I'm going to let you all kind of have some fun with this, is sexist advertising. So, here are some images from the back of Ms. Magazine. It's called No Comment, and these are some of the themes in sex advertising. This is my favorite. This is an ad for a skirt. You can see the skirt there. From Clio Magazine in Australia. She's looking seductively at the camera, no top on, no shoes, etc. What the bitch who's about to steal your man wears. <laughs> Not wearing much. Right? One of the themes in advertising is to pit women against other women in a competition called The Bachelor. Oh no, that's a TV show. <laughs> it's okay if it's on TV. Right? Number one selling bra when it came out about 10 years ago was the Wonder Bra. But this came out before then, and this is Helen's bra and panty set, and it says, maybe you'd see more of him if he saw more of you. <laughs> <laughs> Not very subtle, is it? 
There used to be a skateboard ad, and this is all from Gene Kilboard's Killing Us Softly, um, where, it, where it had on the tag of the boys' skateboard t-shirt uh, a guy with a, it was an icon of a guy with a gun to a woman's head. It says, you know, wash this bitch carefully, or something like that. That's what it said on the t-shirts. This is violence against women as well. But here is the National Jurist magazine, the cover of the National Jurist, so a magazine for law students. More and more women are becoming lawyers and going into law school. But if you get that law degree, you get the cash and the naked girl underneath it, apparently. <laughs> so added incentives. So women as objects, women with money, women as gold diggers is another theme. This is an iconic ad for Sashi. Was it in um, Elizabeth Berkeley Showgirls? She, she called it Versace. Messed up. It's like one day I called it. I, I'm gonna go get a channel handbag for my wife. <laughs> Here's all the, the females. <laughs> guys. This is a, what is called a, a, a post rape pose. I mean, she is literally. If you read into this. I mean, how did she get in that stairwell? She's obviously pushed. I mean, or she bit something she wasn't supposed to bite. Right? This is the whole paradise loss. It's it's an apple that's been bitten. Is this one? No. She's about to. She's, yeah, of course she's going to do it. Right? <laughs> but this is, of course, Madonna. I mean, look at the the name she has. <laughs> Mother of the Lord. I mean, Madonna, and of course. The dress is slit, and I don't know if the purple has any significance, but she's wearing the purple dress. I mean, it's just over and over again, these themes. I'm not making this stuff up. You and I have learned it, and I'll talk about that in a second. Think about he and she, the two pronouns, he and she. So if I say things to you, like the telephone operator or the elementary school teacher. Most of you think through our socialization process, she. But if I start talking about the school principal's office, she. And that's not really the case numerically anymore. But many people. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Is not the case anymore. It used to be, but yeah, it might, it might be changing because of that. Or things like college professor, many people will think he. That is not the case anymore. The physician. So think about those words. And it's not that if you have those thoughts, think about what society has in its group think, its group mind. You know, the female physician will be with you in a moment. The male nurse is going to change your bedpan. Thanks for the heads up. <laughs> because if you said nurse, I might instinctively think nurse is feminine. Mother nature. Ships, airplanes, cars. I'm going to go out and washer and waxer and buffer this weekend in the driveway. <laughs> and I'm going to drive her around and she corners like she's on rails. She handles like a dream. We're talking about my car. We tend to put things that are feminine under our control. Under our control. Where we put things that are masculine as having control, God 